Let's take a look at some polar equations and polar graphs. The first one, r equals 4, has no theta in it, which in the implication there is that theta can be anything. So the graph here is the set of all r comma thetas, where r is always 4 and theta can be any angle. The result of that is a circle centered at the origin of radius 4. And the equation for that in Cartesian would be x squared plus y squared equals 16. You can do that intuitively. We know a circle of radius 4 centered at the origin is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Up here, you could also square both sides and then replace r squared with what it's equal to, and that is x squared plus y squared. Next, look, let's look at theta equals a constant. So when r is a constant, we have a circle centered at the origin. And when theta is a constant, we are going to have a line through the origin. So again, we are looking at um, a situation where one of the variables is missing. So when a variable is missing from an equation, that means that it has no restriction. So in this case, r has no restriction because r is missing from the equation. So this tells us that theta is equal to pi over 3 no matter what, and r has no restriction. So when r is positive, we're going to be plotting these points up here in quadrant 1, and when r is negative, we're going to be plotting these points in quadrant 3. So theta equals pi over 3 is a line through the origin. If we wanted the equation for that line, we know that the equation for a line through the origin is mx, the b is 0, so we just need the slope of this line. And there is a point that we know very well that's on this line, and that is 1 half comma root 3 over 2. So that tells us that the slope is y over x, which is root 3. So therefore, the equation of this line is y equals root 3 times x. Now let's look at these last two, and the way that we're going to convert these from polar over to Cartesian or rectangular is to square, not square, but multiply both sides by r. It may appear that we're squaring both sides, but if we square both sides, we'll, we'll come to a roadblock. But if we multiply by r, we'll have r squared on the left, and that we know converts over to x squared plus y squared. And on the right, we'll have 4r cosine theta. And we know that r cosine theta converts to x. Let's go ahead and work these kind of simultaneously because the process is similar. And let's see if we can just notice some patterns. So here we'll have r squared equals negative 2r sine of theta. The r squared gets replaced with x squared plus y squared. And r sine theta gets replaced with y. So both of these are quadratic equations. They look like they're probably circles, but we don't know for sure until we complete the square and see if the equation puts, uh, if the equation can be put into the standard form for a circle. So what we'll do is collect the like terms. I'm going to put the x's near the x's, the y's near the y's, uh, and then we're going to complete the square. Divide by 2 and square, we add 4, so we add 4 to both sides here. Divide by 2 and square, we get a 1, so we add 1 to both sides. Now we can complete the square. Over here we have x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals 4. This is a circle that has a center of 2 comma 0 and a radius of 2. Over here we complete the square in the y, we get y plus 1 quantity squared. So here we have a circle with center 0, negative 1, and a radius of 1. 